Hello, everybody. Yes, this is an iced coffee. Because I am a homosexual, and if the temperature gets above 15 degrees and I don't have an iced drink, I will die of exposure. Particularly as I'm also a British homosexual, so any temperature above 15 degrees might as well be Marbella. So today, what I'm going to do... Oh, I'm tangled in my cable. So today, what I'm going to do is another one of my little idiot's guides for something that's um, in the news. Called an idiot's guide because I'm an idiot, not because I think you are, and you should take it with a pinch of salt. I'm just going to rehash information that I found in the news, etc, etc. Um, I am not a political expert. I am not a scientist. So, um, yeah, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's... Um, plow on in. So today's video is going to be about um, what's hot in the news at the moment and that is the 14 day quarantine for people arriving in the UK. And seeing as the news story set a precedent of starting with numbers, you know, 14 days, I thought why not go full internet and turn this into a numbered list. So I've read the news so you don't have to and here are 10 things you should know about the 14 day lockdown. No, 14 day, start again. Here's 10 things you should know about the 14 day. Here's 10 things you should know about the 14 day quarantine. Okay, so number one, the government is still only recommending that you travel when it is absolutely necessary and not if you have any symptoms. So this really only applies to essential travel at the moment. It is discouraged for you to just travel for leisure right now. And also that would be a bad idea anyway because nowhere is open. You like, you know, countries are, some of them have their own quarantines and stuff. A lot of stores and stuff won't be open yet. I mean, I personally wouldn't travel around now. It seems like a poor idea whilst the infection rates are still high. Number two. It's going to be reviewed every three weeks. So just like the lockdown is going to be reviewed every three weeks to see that it's still appropriate. Uh, the Home Secretary Priti Patel has said that um, these travel rules are going to be... Um, basically, they're going to be reviewed every three weeks as well. She said something along the lines of they're going to be... Um, reviewing it every three weeks to make sure it's still in line with their roadmap to recovery. So, you know, that's just politicians' way of saying, yeah, we'll check in on it to make sure that it still makes common sense right number three there are no air bridges right now and by air bridges that's kind of a thing that i don't know if it's like a a common thing i didn't know what it was until like politicians started mentioning it but an air bridge is essentially a um you know an agreement between two countries that people can travel freely between them without having to have any sort of travel restrictions or um you know or uh or quarantine so that would be great for tourists because obviously you can come and go for short periods to places that maybe are hugely dependent on tourism. But as of right now, there aren't any agreed. So there's no, no there's, there is no air bridges. Like there's no countries that we can travel to freely and come back and not have to worry about um, quarantine. Well, one maybe, but we'll get to that in a minute. But in the future, at some point, we could agree it with another country and they could become a part of it, right? Like there might be some countries exempt from it, um, which is probably inevitable at some point. But like, I mean, I'm not up on my statistics, but don't we have some of the worst numbers in Europe? Like what's the incentive for other countries to want us to freely be able to visit their country? Apart from the ones that are incredibly dependent on tourism, of course, like... I think is it the Canary Islands are like that eighty percent of their economy is tourism. I think a sizable chunk of that is British, so um, they're probably going to want people back as soon as possible, but hopefully not in a way that just causes a second spike. Right? They'd still have to be cautious. So there may be some air bridges in the future, but there isn't any at the moment. It's just flat. The whole world is wherever you're coming from. You're going to have to quarantine for fourteen days. Hmm. Number four. Um, on the same day these plans were announced, France announced similar plans. So if you were planning on visiting France, when you get there from the UK, you're going to have to quarantine for um, 14 days in a very similar kind of system to the one that we're having here. And I think it's the same in France with people from Spain. And also like France has a list of um, people who are exempt and, you know. So if you're planning on going to Disneyland Paris this summer, then... Uh, Either cancel those plans or add another two weeks of hotel. Oh, it's closed anyway, isn't it? That would be a dumb idea to go to Disneyland anyway, but I think it's still closed. I don't know. Can you make lightsabers at the Disneyland Paris? 
Number five, this applies to everyone, including holidaymakers. But there is a list of people who are exempt. Like, if you just want to go on your holiday because you're bored in lockdown, like, number one, you're selfish. And number two, you're going to have to quarantine for 14 days when you get back. It's just that, you know, I'm pretty sure it's non-negotiable at this point, unless you are on a list of people that are exempt, and that is people like um, medical workers, lorry drivers, and I think something else, is, there's a, a quite an extensive list, like it's extensive but specific, so it's not like a broad range of people that are exempt from it, but um, I think seasonal farm workers were on there as well, which is relevant to my old video on, um, you know, Pick for Britain. I need to check that website, see if it's up and running now, but yeah, so, um, if you're a farm worker or a lorry driver or a medical worker or something like that, then you probably won't have to do the, the quarantine. Number six, airlines hate it. Like airlines hate it. They really, um, I mean, I'll go on to the specifics of it in just a bit, um, in a later number, but um, airlines seem to be convinced that this is going to kill the flight industry, right? Particularly Airlines UK, which is the UK's like trade body for the aviation industry, said that they think it's going to kill the industry and that it's shutting us off from the rest of the world when other countries are opening their economies. And um, isn't that a point? Like, we want to be shut off from the rest of the world right now because we need to get these numbers down. And other countries might be spinning up their economies, but we had worse we had worse case numbers than them, didn't we? So as from a complete, you know, non-expert, I don't remember the specific numbers point of view, seems like that's what we would want. And also, the, isn't the government giving the aviation industry money? Like, I mean, I work in tourism, right? So I, I get what they're saying, but I don't want, you know, I don't care <laughs> about a flight company, right? I care more about keeping the numbers down and being sensible than I do about saving a flight company. And I don't think it's gonna kill the industry because the second that this finishes, everyone's gonna want a holiday, right? And I say the second this is gonna finish, like it's gonna be gradual, so it won't be the second, but there will still be an aviation industry. What, are you just gonna like trap everyone in Britain <laughs> because they can't fly anywhere? That's just, it's not gonna happen, is it? So, but I kill the industry. I'm certain that was hyperbole. You know, it's gonna make some businesses struggle, but I don't think that, I think that these rules are very sensible. And I think obviously there's a bit of a, you know, maybe ulterior motive for why the aviation industry hates these rules and thinks that we should do something more complicated because then it gives them more leeway. Like the more nuance you introduce into these kind of plans, the more confusing it is, the more loopholes people are gonna find and the more people are gonna try and circumvent it. Just keep it like simple and strict in my opinion. Okay, so number seven, the way it works. Basically, if you're planning to travel, you have to tell the government where you're going to quarantine for 14 days when you get back. You get like a form and you have to write down on the form what your what address you're going to be like quarantining at and you need to give them contact details and stuff. And if you don't fill out this form, you could face a 100 pound fine. Number eight, it's being enforced. <laughs> like you, they tell you when you fill out the form that you could be contacted at any time, right? Any time. So I assume they must take a mobile number or something. And then also they inform you that you will go through spot checks, which means <laughs> people from the government could come to your house to make sure you're there. Because if you're like me, you're probably thinking like, oh, if it's a mobile number, people are just gonna, you know, go wherever they want and say like, oh yeah, I'm at home, but, they're spot checking at people's houses, which is good, right? I mean, I would be interested to see how many spot checks actually get made or whether it's like a ghost threat, right? But, you know, they're gonna be spot checking to make sure that people actually are staying somewhere for 14 days, and that's good, that's good. Number nine, if these people spot checking find that you're breaching your quarantine, you could be fined a thousand pounds. Like, good, <laughs> good, find them more. I think that that's quite modest, to be honest, but I guess it's like a sensible a sensible amount. It's not going to cause outrage, and it's like an amount that people may actually realistically be able to pay, maybe. If you don't comply with that, like the £1,000 fine, then you could be prosecuted and be given an unlimited fine, which is, you know, unlimited is a lot more than £1,000. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully... I would like to think that no one is going to get to that point of being such an idiot that they've ignored all of the advice 
Oh, it's it's going to happen, isn't it? I'm so hopeful. I see the good in people, you know? And I shouldn't. Number 10. Um, there are loopholes. Unfortunately. Um, so, basically, the loopholes are that... The UK has a common travel area, um, and you might not know that if you're not from the UK, or you might not know that if you're in the UK. I didn't, but I'm an idiot. But the common travel area is basically um, all of the UK, and also um, like Ireland, the Channel Islands, and the Isle of Man. And you can freely travel all within that area without any kind of restrictions. So that means that you can travel to and from Ireland without having to quarantine for 14 days. Now, Ireland is not part of the UK. So they are not affected by this 14 day law. So now you have travel companies saying that they will just route their holiday flights via Ireland. And if you say that you go on holiday, right? You have a lovely beach holiday and you come back and you fly into Belfast first, and then you fly to your home airport, then you won't have to quarantine. Which to me seems hugely dishonest, really silly, and just criminal, <laughs> like, it's, I've tried to lead my way through this lockdown experience by thinking to myself, if it feels like a loophole, I'm not going to do it, because it's, if it feels like a loophole, it's not in the spirit of cooperating with making sure everyone's safe, right? It's just not, it's not sensible. And a spokesperson from the Home Office, I think, answered a question on this, and the news stories I read just sort of had the quote, ambiguously near information about Ireland. And they said, hang on, I wanted to look at this. Um, a spokesperson for the Home Office said, anyone traveling from Ireland will be exempt. However, given the high levels of compliance we have seen to date, we expect that the majority of people will do the right thing and abide by these measures. You know what I was saying about having faith in people's good intentions? We'll see, right? We'll see. And also, um, I found like conflicting news stories on this, right? But it would appear that you can get public transport to the address that you're quarantining in. So if you've had to fly, you can get on public transport to go back to your address where you will then quarantine. And mm, that seems ill-advised. I mean, I couldn't suggest I couldn't suggest what a sensible alternative would be because if someone has to travel for an essential reason, so they're going to do it, you can't really say to them, well, you can't because you don't have a car. I mean, I guess you could, but it seems like, I don't know, if they have to travel for an essential reason, telling them they can't is gonna cause a lot of conflict. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, what's, what's the government gonna do? Pay for taxis for 70 mile journeys? Probably not. And that's, you know, that's it. That's the 10 things. So that's like the idiot's guide to this 14 day, um, 14 day quarantine. Um, hopefully it won't really be applicable to any of you right now because nobody should really have any plans to go anywhere. <laughs> but it's interesting, you know, to see the way that the government is rolling out new measurements to, you know, slowly return to normality, slowly, slowly, slowly. But, um, yeah, seeing as I wanted to know more about it because it's relevant to my day job. So I just thought that I would make a video about it and share the information that I'd found with you. And if I've got anything wrong, then let me know in the comments. Or, you know, if this is going to affect you in some way, then I'd like to hear from you as well. That'd be sick because, um, you know, I'm interested in it. It's relevant to me. And, um, yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs>